Once you've finalised your estimate, you can create a stage payment schedule to present to your client. In this video, I'll show you how to set up the stage payment schedule. Once you've opened your job, click Outputs on the Navigator. From here, you can see a complete list of all the outputs available. The quote, building regs notes and stage payment documents can all be found in the Written Documents section. Click the Open button next to Stage Payments. A preview of the Stage Payments document appears in the middle of your screen. You can zoom in and out of the Stage Payments document using the buttons on the ribbon at the top of the screen. Alternatively, you can hold down the control key on your keyboard and use the scroll wheel of your mouse to zoom in and out. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll find the Stage Payments Settings pane. The Terms tab will be open when you first navigate to the Stage Payments document. Here you'll find a number of different settings. Firstly, you can choose whether to include a deposit. If you want to include a deposit, tick the Take a Deposit tick box. Then set the date the deposit will be taken. Click on the drop down box, click through the months, and select the deposit date. Next you can set the deposit percentage, let's say 5%. Click Apply Changes when you make any changes to see the effect on the stage payment schedule. Here we can see the deposit has been added to the start of the stage payment schedule. Now you need to think about the way the payments will be scheduled, using the billing frequency settings. You can either schedule payments for the start or end of the build phases, or you can schedule payments at regular intervals, say every 30 days or once a month. To bill at the start or end of the build phases, select the top option. Then click the Build Phases Charging Methodology button. The Build Phase Settings dialog box opens up. Scrolling down, you'll see a section for each build phase within the job. Within each section, there are options to build for each resource type – material, labour, plant and so on – at the start or the end of the build phase. By default, the stage payment schedule will bill for materials at the start of a build phase, so you have money coming in to cover your material purchases, and the other resources are billed for at the end of each build phase. You can of course change these settings as desired. For example, you could change all resource types to be billed for at the start of the build phase. You can also group together build phases so that they're billed for at the same time. For example, you can charge for the building regulations and design phase at the same time as the planning application phase. So I can set the building regulations phase to be billed for at the same time as the planning application phase. And the same with the design phase. Click save to save your changes and then apply changes to see the changes in the stage payment schedule. Now we can see that the planning application, building regulations and design phase are all being billed for together. Alternatively, you can set the schedule to bill at regular intervals by selecting the second option under Billing Frequency. Set the billing interval to days or months using the drop-down box. For example, you could bill every 30 days or once a month. I'm going to set the billing date to every 30 days. Once you've done that, set the billing start date. Then of course click Apply Changes to see the effect on the stage payment schedule. I'm going to stick to billing at the start or end of build phases for now. The next group of setting relates to inflation, retentions and defects liability. As with the quote, you can include inflation in the stage payment schedule, or you can switch inflation off. Whichever option you select, make sure it matches the quote. Next we have some bill retention options. You can set a percentage of each interim bill to be held by the customer until completion of the defects liability period. You can also set the percentage of the final bill to be retained by the customer until the end of the defects liability period. The interim and final bill retentions are grouped together in the final payment, called the payment on completion of defects liability period at the end of the stage payment schedule. The final option you have is the defects liability period. This is set to 6 months by default, but could be 12 months or whatever is set out in your contract. There are also some settings on VAT charging. Firstly, use the tick box to set whether you want to charge VAT or not. 
then you can set the VAT percentage. By default, Estimator Express will add 20% VAT onto the stage payments, as with the quote, but this figure can be changed to a different percentage if VAT rates change. For example, if you're doing work which meets the conditions for reduced rate VAT, for example renovating an empty property, you could change this figure to 5%. If you're not VAT registered, select the input only option from the drop-down box. Remember to click Apply Changes to update the schedule with your changes. Now let's have a look at the cash flow report. On the navigator, click cash flow report under stage payments. The cash flow report can be used to help you manage your business. It combines the cash flow report from the data reports with the stage payment schedule to help you project the flow of money in and out of your business. We have a set of tools for editing the cash flow report. Click on the cash flow report tab on the settings pane. From here, you can change the title of the report. You can type directly into the text box or insert keywords to appear at the top of the document. Then we have a number of cost settings. There's an option to include overheads as a cost. This is entirely up to you and what's most useful for your business. Then there's an option to include VAT payments as an outgoing cost. If you tick this box, set your VAT quarter ends by selecting an option from the drop down box. As with the stage payment document, click Apply Changes to see your changes in the cash flow report. You can also use the Payment Remittance box to set the delay before the VAT is paid out. Tweak this if necessary. Then we have a couple of payment settings. You can also alter the payment remittance. By default, 14 days will be added onto the payment date for cash flowing in. You can change this remittance period if required. The Terms tab on the Settings pane remains available when you're in the cash flow report. This means you can tweak the stage payment schedule while analysing the cash flow report. For example, based on this schedule, with a 5% deposit, I'm in deficit at this stage of the build. That means I'm effectively subsidising the job for a period. By increasing the deposit, I can ensure that my cash flow remains healthier. As you can see, analysing the cash flow report and adapting the stage payment schedule accordingly can help you manage your business more effectively. Over to you. Go to Outputs on the Navigator and open up your stage payments schedule. Set up the deposit date and amount and billing frequency using the options on the settings pane. Check you're happy with the inflation, retentions and defects liability settings and also the VAT settings. Then open up your cash flow report on the Navigator. Tweak the cost and payment settings as appropriate to project the cash flow for your job.